Hello and welcome to the Album Man and today I'm going to be doing weekly rock news for the week of the 17th of March 2013. So this week has been, well, well quite a sad week to be honest unfortunately. Um, so I think we'll start off and kick off with the sad news, sort of get out of the way really. So the first piece of sad news is that the well, one of the YES founding members, Peter Banks, who was the founding guitarist and appeared on, um, I think, their first two, first two albums. Peter Banks died on March the 8th at age 65. Um, I can't say I know what he died of particularly, but um, yes, it's sad that he died. You know, um, he was the, actually the person who even came up with the YES name. And, you know, quite an influential guitarist. I mean, those first two Yes albums were massively influential on prog. Um, the first Yes album being one of the first really true prog albums, along with King Crimson's In the Court of the Crimson King. So, influential guitarist, and he'll be missed. Shame he died, you know, quite young. Okay. Secondly, we have one that wasn't too much of a surprise, but still really, really sad nevertheless that the Iron Maiden original drummer Clive Bear passed away on March the 12th. Um, he appeared on the first three albums, Iron Maiden, Killers and Number of the Beast. And yeah, I mean, it wasn't too much of a surprise as he had, um, for many years, had been suffering from multiple sclerosis. Um, so, you know, at least he seemed to die peacefully in his sleep, I suppose, but still terribly sad news. Fantastically talented drummer, and shame he never really got to, you know, carry on his career. I mean, I remember Maiden doing various things like Clive Aid and stuff to get him the money to help him for his treatment, which was, you know, always good they were supporting him, but he finally died, and yeah, you know, is is a shame, to be honest. Okay. Let's try and move away from the sad news now, um, you know, because we've had a lot of sad news the last few weeks. So, some little news, but I know, I still find it quite interesting, is that Black Sabbath have, um, well, made their album 30 in available for pre-order, and they've, you know, talked about release dates, so it's being released on June the 10th, obviously 2013, and it's going to be available in three versions, a standard CD, which is, I think, a tenner, a deluxe double CD, which is about £14, with a bonus audio material disc, whatever. Um, there's also going to be a 12-inch heavyweight vinyl in gatefold um, sleeve, which I think is about 18 or something. And then there's the super deluxe box set, which is 50 quid, which contains documentary DVD, behind-the-scenes video, track-by-track -track interview download, art... Um, photos, handwritten album lyrics, as well as having the vinyl and the CD version, the deluxe CD version as well. And if you pre-order, you get entered into a thing to win VIP tickets to the launch event in London. But yeah, you know, I'm really looking forward to this album. It's probably my most anticipated album of 2013. I've been so excited for it, and I'll probably end up pre-ordering it, to be honest. Probably the deluxe edition as well. Okay, and the final piece of news is that, well, it's a David Lee Roth said um, earlier last week that uh, the band Van Halen were planning to make their first visit to Europe since 1998 before the end of the year, which sounds really good. Love to see Van Halen, love David Lee Roth, um, love Van Halen. So, sounds wonderful, love the last album. And um, so, basically... Well, you know, he said that, and the manager has come out, who is, I can't even remember, and said, I manage the Van Halens, and I know nothing about any New York tour, as of, that's it, as of. And, um, yeah. So, who knows? I mean, the last time David Lee Roth appeared with Van Halen in the UK was the Monsters of Rock tour in 1984, I think, on that album. So yes, um, I really hope they do, and that it's just, I don't know, but, they, I mean, they're playing Australia, Japan, a date in Wiz Cousin, I think, apparently, and they're all confirmed on sale, and those are real, um, 
Hopefully this is. I mean, he ain't even said they're going to be playing 50 to 60 shows in Europe, which that would be really, really cool. Um, you know, hopefully play quite a few venues in the UK. So, I hope that happens, but who knows. Okay, so that's pretty much it for really big news stories this week. So, we'll move on to the albums I've been listening to this over the last week. So, we'll start with this. Iron Maiden's Number of the Beast. It's pretty obvious why I've been listening to this album, of course. It was the last Iron Maiden album to feature Clive Bear. And, um, as well as that, um, well, yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, it's also my favourite Iron Maiden album. I love this album to absolute pieces. Um, yeah, I mean, what a way for him to, you know, sign off for Iron Maiden with an album like this. And the drumming on this is just spectacular. Yeah, we really enjoyed listening to this again. Also been listening to a bit of Metallica, Ride the Lightning. Um, yeah, love this album. I mean, it really is a classic with songs like For Whom the Bells Toll, Fade to Black, Trapped Under Ice, Creeping Death, and Call of Cthulhu, which has such a great bass line. Cliff Burton really shows why he's such a, you know, highly regarded bassist with something like The Call of Cthulhu. Oh, such a good song. Love this album. One of my favourite Metallica albums, definitely. Probably say my third favourite. I'd say my first black album. Well, no, I don't know, third or fourth. But first black album, definitely. Second Master of Puppets. Then I third, maybe, Injustice. But I don't know, this is starting to creep up on Injustice. Love this a lot. Today, I've been listening to a bit of Alice Cooper, some trash. Unfortunately, it's the only Alice Cooper album I have. Don't know why. I love, like, everything I've heard of Alice Cooper. But, um, yes, this is very much his more commercial album. This was released in 1989. It was produced and co-written by Desmond Child, who, of course, notorious, especially for co-writing a lot of Bon Jovi stuff, like the Slippery and Wet album and the song Living on a Prayer. And yeah, I really like this album. Yes, it's very, very 80s. Yes, it's very, very commercial and not really like his 70s stuff. But I just love the big courses in songs like Poison, Spark in the Dark, House of Fire, Bed of Nails, I'm Your Gun. It's just 10 really solid tracks. I can't say I'm as big a fan as This Maniac's In Love With You. I think that song, it doesn't quite hold up. It sounds very dated. But the rest of it really like, um, especially House of Fire. Which, oh my god, just on paper it sounds amazing because, you know, of course it's written by Cooper and Child, but um, also it's co-written by Joan Jett as well. Oh, love Joan Jett so much. And also it featured guitar from Richie Sambora and from Steve LaCarthur. So, yeah, um, really good album. I'm sure everyone knows that I mean, sold tons of copies. And lastly, but by bloody no means least, an album that really had never given a proper chance before and has suddenly just clicked with me and absolutely blown me away. Led Zeppelin 2. I mean, it's a classic. What's there to be said about this album that hasn't been said? It starts with a whole lot of love and ends with bringing on home and in between you have things like the Lemon Song um, which is just unbelievable. I love that song. Ramble On, Moby Dick which has such great drums from John Bonham. Just everything on this album. This album is just unbelievable. I'm going to have to put it in my um, top albums list, top 100. It has to. I think it's going to go pretty bloody high. It's an amazing album. Um, if you're one of the few people on the planet who hasn't heard this album, then definitely recommend checking it out. But I doubt anyone hasn't, really. Yeah, wonderful album. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have to say. This has been The Album Man. Thanks for watching, can't wait to subscribe, and as usual, long live rock and roll.